Right, here we are onto the classic factoring trinomials, okay? When you see these x squared, x, and a number at the end, there's a certain way to do it. Some of you might be familiar, uh, it's like doing a reverse FOIL. In other words, a FOIL, two parentheses together, will give you these questions, so how can you do it backwards, all right, and get the two parentheses? Now, it kind of works like this. Um, okay, so, here's six at the end, all right? Here's five in the middle. Now, if I was to factor these, I'm going to write two parentheses, pretty much like you've been seeing. That like factor by grouping with two parentheses, remember, as the final answer. Now, okay, so I've got an x squared at the start. The way to get x squared is x times x. That'll give you the x squared. So there's your start, all right? Then here it goes, okay? So remember, it's the two things that multiply that make the first thing... And also, what two things multiplied make the last thing. And then somehow you've got to get to the middle. All right? So, we've done the x times x is x squared. What makes 6 at the end? Now, that could be 6 times 1, or it could be 3 times 2. But this is where the middle coefficient comes in, that 5. Out of 6 and 1, and 3 and 2, the numbers that make 6 when you multiply, which is the combination that makes 5 when you add? Well, it's the 3 and the 2. So if I do this, plus 3, plus 2, there we go. 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 and 2 is the 5 in the middle. All you have to do is check by doing a FOIL. Now, I normally say just check by doing the OI bit, because you've already done that and that for the first, and you've done that and that for the last. So what's the outer? That's 2x. What's the inner? That's 3x. And of course, when you get them together, add them together, you get the 5x, okay? So it's two numbers that multiply make the last number that when you add make the middle number. You can think of it like that, all right? So once you've got that, um, honestly, it's... Let's erase some of this. It's just now, what are the numbers? So I can pick any one of these. Let's have a look. Um, well, let's have a look at 24 now. I'll do them all anyway. Let's have a look at 24. So this time, again going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. That's to get the x squared at the start. Right, how do I get 16 at the end? Now, it's negative 16, so one's got to be plus and one's got to be minus. Now, 16 could come from 1 times 16, 2 times 8, or 4 times 4. But I need to get to positive 6 in the middle. So, think about it. Well, I'm going to just tell you, it's... Um, it's 8 and 2 because if you have a positive 8 and a negative 2, when you multiply that, you'll get the negative 16. Okay, so positive 8 and negative 2. But can you also see when you add those two numbers, 8 and negative 2 will give you positive 6 in the middle. Okay, so if I did this, that's the answer. So if I did this, x squared minus, oops, that's a big minus, 6x minus 16. Okay, not plus 6x, but minus 6x. It would be x minus 8. It would be the other way around. With an x plus 2. It's still 8 and 2. One positive, one negative. But now can you see the 8 is the negative and the 2 is the positive. Because that will give me the negative 6x. Okay, so that's just it. It's just you kind of figuring out what those two numbers are. Um, oh, I don't know. Any more on that anymore? Let's look at 23. 23. Okay, and here's why. 23, two parentheses. Right, definitely an x times an x, okay? Right, two numbers that make negative 30 when you multiply, now watch this, that make negative 1 when you add. So if you're looking for the number, it's negative 1. So that could be a trick one. Right, two numbers. 3 and 10, you're not going to get to 1 from that. 2 and 15, no, 5 and 6. Okay, now think about it. I want to get to negative 1, so I want more negatives. So it's 5 and 6. I'm going to put the 6 as the negative and the 5 as the positive because that will give me negative 30 when I multiply. I need 1 plus 1 minus, and there's the negative 1 when you add. And that's pretty much it. You know, it's just look at numbers. I mean, quickly look at 25. Here we go. X and X. Now, 54, 9 times 6. You need to know your multiplication tables. I want more negatives, negative 3, so negative 9, positive 6. There you go, that's negative 3 when you add. 
And that's it, folks. I mean, occasionally you get some trick ones, wouldn't it? And when I say a trick one, watch this. x squared plus 4x plus 8. All right? So you've got to think to yourself, what's two numbers that make 8 when I multiply that make 4 when I add? And students sit there and go, 2 and 6, no, four, um, and I say, there isn't any. You can't do it. There are no two numbers. That's prime, all right? There's, we call it prime, just like 13 is prime. Whereas 6 is 2 times 3, you can break a 6 up into 2 and 3, just like you can break all these up into two parentheses. You can't do that one. There are no two numbers. You might, no, might not get on the test anyway, but just be aware of that, okay?